heavy overhead press again today. Historically, overhead press has suffered for weight cuts for me. I mean, that's just how it goes for a lot of people. Pressing movements suffer, especially bench and barbell overhead presses. But again, I'm pretty confident I'll be able to still able to gain strength in a lot of the compound movements over this cut just because high intensity rules. So uh, yeah, 72 kilos. We'll see how many reps I get. Um, I've got a video coming out uh, detailing everything I'm going to be doing or the most important parts of what I'll be doing for my weight cut uh, this over the next 75 days. So keep an eye on that if you're cutting right now or you'll be cutting soon or just generally want some tidbits uh, on how to make your cut smoother, then watch out for this video because, man, I've fucking done a lot of cutting over the years successfully and unsuccessfully, and I've had to learn a lot about cutting and had to just, you know, be creative and get a bunch of tidbit, bit, tidbits here and there in order to cut because I suck at cutting. I have a slow metabolism, I like food a lot, so, you know, seldom do you want to take advice from someone who is really good at something naturally. If someone's really good at cutting weight because they have the fast metabolism, what fucking tricks and tips have they learned along the way? Probably none because they don't need any. So I suck at cutting, but that's why I have a lot of info on how to cut. So yeah, keep an eye on that. It will be helpful. So I think we got maybe 70 days to go. I'm a cut, I'm a week in, one week in, and I'm uh, down, I think, one and a half, two kilos, so not too shabby so far. Another nine or eight or nine to go. Or maybe nine or 10, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Fucking mics in the way. Drop says too, too little. pretty good. I think that was nine or 10 reps. If it's 10, I get to progress again. Meaning I've progressed, you know, because normally, you know, with heavy compound movements, a lot of times, you know, I do six to 10 reps or eight to 12. Um, a lot of times you'll be progressing through the reps for maybe a few weeks. Like one, you say you get eight reps of the uh, barbell overhead press week one. Next week you might get nine or 10 then 11 or 12 the next one. And then when you hit 12 or whatever the high end of the rep range is, you progress. But yeah, I mean, that that's the first time lifting that. I was, ex I was expecting six or seven. So the fact I probably got nine or 10 there means I'm ready to progress already. Good stuff, good signs for this cut so far.
Oh, fuck. Painful, painful, painful. So that side lateral is done right to failure are going to hurt more than just about anything else. Side laterals are already painful. Shoulders have a lot of pain receptors, but that's a, a whole nother level. Um, I don't like slow negatives on side laterals. I feel like on the way down, I'm mostly recruiting stabilizers like rotator cuffs, um, tendons and ligaments, I feel like a lot of a chromium strain. I just, I really, I just get everything from this part. So yeah, negative damage is important where it, where it works. But for some muscles, for some people, negatives are just not the best bet. I mean, same with rear delts. Opening up like that, that's where I get the contraction on the way up. On the way down, due to the biomechanics of it, or at least especially with cables or dumbbells, on the way down, you're not really, like the, the resistance is very nominal. You could control that for a lot longer. So I, uh, side laterals and rear delts, I just, I just care about the squeezing up and lifting it. The negatives, I don't really give a shit about at all. That might be controversial, especially as a high intensity guy, but lived experience, what works for you? Uh, don't listen to everyone else, feel, just feel, just feel what's going on. When I, like people would say slow negatives, like the, the god of it all, Dorian Yates, slow negatives. All right, cool, slow negatives. Ah, shit, my, my rotator cuff. Ah, fuck, I'm not really feeling my side belt. So for me, not so much. So, um, now that I'm cutting, I've decided I'm not gonna do any heavy, you know, wall curls like this, because one, when you're cutting those small, minute muscles, the fuck, someone's screaming outside. Manic, say, people with mania. Um, what was I saying? It's throwing me off. Oh well, I'll put my earphones on so I can't hear it. <laughs> Sick, I can't hear it now. Um, ignorance is bliss. What am I fucking saying? Right, uh, I'm cutting, so minute strength movements, like the strict curl, it, it's hard to progressively overload at the best of times. So then I'm cutting, I won't see any progress. I don't see the point because on top of that, I get a lot of tendonitis, bicep tendonitis from doing strict bicep curls. So not because of the strict bicep curls specifically, it's not inherently a problematic movement. It's from side pressure in the arm wrestling training that I do that's devastating for my fucking arms. It's, I mean, every, every area of my, eye, my elbow attachment is fucked. Brachyradialis, bicep tendon, uh, wrist flexor tendons, they're all just aching all the time. So, you know, I should quit side pressure, but I refuse because I'm getting very strong at it. So too fucking bad. Um, but basically, anyway, not doing strict curls. So you're gonna see me doing a lot more sort of isolation movements that would consi be considered fluff, but I have a different take on that. People often say, you know, if you wanna get big, especially as a natural, get big at the, at the main compound movements like bench press, squat, deadlift. And I think that's fucking ret retarded and ludicrous because at the end of the day, if you get strong at any movement, so long as the muscle that you're targeting is working functionally, if you get really fucking strong at that movement, 
then the muscle's gonna get bigger. So whether I do a strict curl or my leverage curl that you're gonna see me doing in a second, doesn't really make a difference. I'm prog if I progressively overload it and get it to a tremendously strong level, it doesn't matter. I'd argue that a isolation machine or a movement that requires less skill and you can feel the muscle that you're trying to target better is superior than a compound movement like the bench press where there's a skill component. And for many, they can't isolate their chest any, any better. So I don't buy this. And you, you, I mean, you see any, any elite bodybuilder, a lot of time these guys are doing machines for this reason. They don't give a fuck about the ego or the neurological adaptations or any of this bullshit. They're fucking strong as shit at machines. They're probably very strong at barbell movements if they wanted to, but there's no point. There's more injury risk. And in my case, a lot of times barbell movements, I just don't feel them as well. So. If I get strong at the movement that I can feel better, it just, it just logic will prevail that I'm gonna get bigger off it. So no more strict curls for a bit, and maybe I'll never do them again, I don't fucking know. Like my ego isn't that attached to that one, so I might not end up doing them again. But, um, and, and the reason I was doing this was I was under the false pretense that it's a big compound movement, and thus I can get, if I get stronger at it, it will reap more gains, but it's like, well, no, it's not compound. The whole idea is the strict curls and isolation movement. So it's no fucking different to the movement I'm doing right now. I just, you really need to stop and analyze things sometimes to go, huh, why am I even following that? That's stupid. And I heard that somewhere else clearly. Um, Cause I didn't come up with that idea. That's just plain retarded. And I don't consider myself retarded. So anyway, that might be a massively controversial point, but this bicep curl I'm about to do allows me to feel my bicep pain-free and I can isolate it a hell of a lot more. And if I get this tremendously strong, my biceps will get tremendously big. Simple. That's the only issue with this is the digging into my forearms like crazy. Ah, ah fuck, man. That's painful as shit. Hold on. Ah, yeah, that's better. doesn't even compare. That is so much better than a fucking barbell curl. I don't care what you say. Holy shit, that's insane. Also, the resistance curve is, is reversed, so it's hardest at the top, which means you get more at the bottom at the later reps, uh, and that way you don't falsely uh, fail through the passive insufficiency. So that fucking, that's just way, this is better. It's just better, dude. My muscle connection there, no pain, better resistance curve. Why would I do a barbell curl? You know what it is though, it's fucking painful, dude. That hurts. Ugh. <sighs> 
so that movement, again, huge contraction at the top. Now I'm going to focus more on the stretch overload, try to get uh, more eccentric damage and potential hyperplasia through the stretch. Biceps is one of the only movements where you can really get a good stretch to the bottom. Um, so this is a great way of doing that. And then I do my brachioradialis and brachialis. That one is like almost pain tolerance over physical failure. Like I almost couldn't keep going to physical failure. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's so brutal. You really need to like, at the last second, let it kind of just totally go and you get this fucking insane stretch and and then it only complements the, oh, just try this combo at home. If you, or at the gym or whatever. If you can get one of those fucking bicep curl things that I have used, use that. If not, maybe do like a spider curl, have your arm fully, uh, you know, uh, raised up. And that way you can get a peak contraction and then follow that up by a heavy stretch overload uh, movement in the total opposite end of the spectrum. All right, like that's so fucked up, man. <sighs> I'm just gonna do a, a I'm gonna do a, a rest pause because it was just too painful to drop set that. I think I have a pretty good pain tolerance, but that is pushing it. And also don't go all the way up, just uh, to maybe 45 degree angle, I don't know. Like not all the way up, just from all the way stretched to like just above the length and partial range. Holy shit, dude. So that's the main workout done. Now just the rotator cuffs. And I've decided from 
Now on, I'm just gonna do one set of failure every day of traps for the nucleus overload. Now that sounds heretical, and it's like the, pan the Pandora's box opens. You're like, well, if I can train traps every day to failure, well, how many things can I do daily to failure? Like, I'm just gonna play conservative because there is a systemic da stress. I think just training traps one set to failure uh, every day isn't gonna be that big a deal. And because at the end of the day, like there's probably thousands of construction workers around the world who are like, training a muscle group to failure numerous times a day to do their job. And you don't see them going, I'm overtrained or I'm getting smaller. No, like I think the body can adapt. Um, but anyway, I've kind of forgot where I was going with this, but yeah, I, I, I fucking hate volume training and nucleus overload is like the epitome of volume. It's numerous reps in the reserve, heaps of reps, heaps of frequency. And I fucking hate doing it. hate remembering, having to remember to do it. I always forget. So now I'm just going to do what I know best. I love doing the most which is high intensity training. And it's not gonna be like brutal sets to failure where I'm like squeezing the last rep and drop setting it and shit. It's gonna be like to failure or maybe like almost two, maybe not even two total failure, maybe like a rep or two in reserve. And that way I can just easily adhere to it. So, oh. cramping in my glute. Fuck, 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 fuck. Ah, ah fuck. Fuck, man. My glute media is always cramps in like awkward positions. It's very fucking annoying. Well, I almost reached failure. Ideally, I don't want to take this movement to failure anyway because it's the rotator cuff. You don't want to inflame it, potentially injure a small muscle. Oh, I can feel that one too. I can feel my left glute. It's because I did leg day yesterday, so that shit is almost cramping up. <sighs> ah, fuck shit. This rotator cuff's tighter. Tighter and weaker. Doesn't have as much range. I might need to start doing a bit more work on the left rotator cuff. I need to start stretching it. I don't feel too tight, I don't know. It's definitely, that's my looser shoulder joint though, that's probably why. All right, now I'm just gonna do a set of drugs to failure. Simple as. Just fuck. This is going into the playlist for sure. Damn, these Maori dudes are going hard. It's like listening to the haka with metal. This is fucking rad. So that's what I'm gonna do every day. It's just, uh, that's it. Super easy, one set the failure, bang. Traps, 
nucleus overload. Maybe not as effective as the higher rep blood flow work because I think that's part of the theory of nucleus overload is high reps, lots of blood. But I got plenty of that pump from that, so you know, it's not if it's not as good, then so be it. It's just that much easier for me to adhere to. And until next time, see you guys. Well, peace and vinegar. Bye bye.